Hey, Michael Inwood's here. I'm here with attorney... Omid Tubai. Omid Tubai, and we're here to talk about uh, the ESTA visa. Thank you for joining us here at Facebook Live. Um, so, Omid, what is an ESTA visa? Thanks so much for asking, Michael. I'm excited to be talking about the ESTA visa today. So, the ESTA visa is a program uh, offered by the United States for 38 countries around the world. And these 38 countries are um, high income, thought to be high income countries um, that are very secure. And so the United States is comfortable offering this program to these 38 countries um, because of the fact that it's uh, believed that a high level of security checking um, is conducted in these places and you know because of the relative security of these countries um, we forego the traditional visa process which usually requires a consular interview mm. um, in favor of um, essentially providing this waiver program where people can um, are authorized to stay in the United States for a period of up to 90 days through an online application that requires no interview it's a very easy process um, and in exchange for, um, you know, having your visa requirements waived, you have to also waive some certain rights to mm -hmm. be able to come to the United States. And so some of those rights are, um, one, you waive the right to extend your visa. Two, uh, you waive the right to change status to another visa, mm -hmm. and you waive the right to contest removal when uh, the big bad wolf <laughs> comes after you. So then you'll just get right out. Yeah. Yeah. And now, what what activities are permitted on an ESTA visa? Yeah, um, this is actually a point of great confusion for, for a lot of people for a lot of different reasons because um, specifically in the in the business world, if you're a tourist, not so much you'll come here and you know you'll go to the Hollywood sign or whatever it is and you know that, that doesn't pose any problems. But in the business world, it does pose problems for people because business activities are permitted, but only certain business activities. And so um, you know, there was uh, a seminal case uh, on this matter that was handed down from the Board of Immigration Appeals, the BIA, uh, known as Matter of Hira. And what Matter of Hira turned on, the facts of the case were that uh, there was a tailor who had a manufacturing plant uh, overseas and abroad, and he was coming over to the United States um, to essentially collect um, and identify clients uh, so that he can send you know these tailored items back to his manufacturing plant abroad mm -hmm. and the case essentially what was decided was that the place where profit is accrued it determines where you know where work is being done because on an ESTA visa you are not permitted to work in the United States you're permitted to come here on behalf of business and business activities, but you are not allowed to work. And so that's kind of confusing for a lot of people because it's like, if I'm here on business and you know I'm sending emails and that yeah. sort of thing, and I'm like, you know, creating products, isn't that work? But I'm technically supposed to be here on business and I'm allowed to be here on business, but I'm not allowed to work. It's very confusing. Yeah. So this case, uh, you know, essentially made it more clear, kind of, um, that the place where profit is being accrued is what determines where the work is being done. So that's matter of Hira. Now that um, that tells us, you know, a lot about, um, you know, what determines uh, what work is and, you know, permitted activities under the ESTA visa. Some other permitted activities under the ESTA visa are um, commercial transactions, so coming here to identify clients, mm -hmm. um, you know, conducting business meetings, negotiating contracts, um, serving on a board of directors, that sort of thing. These are just some of the permitted business activities. Okay. Yeah. So tell me, let's say hypothetically uh, I am in a startup, a tech startup, mm -hmm. for example, and I get accepted into an accelerator based here out of the States. Mm -hmm. Would an ESTA visa be the right visa to go for in regards to that, you know, to carrying it out? Absolutely. That's a great question, Michael. And this is definitely something that we see a lot and that we work with a lot as well. Um, and 
Uh, so, you know, you're in a tech startup, you're accept accepted into an accelerator, you know, the purpose of an accelerator is to essentially help you build your company. Um, so you're going to this program, they're going to help you develop your product, they're going to help you find your product market fit so that you can get it out there and you can, you know, be the next Facebook or, mm. you know, Google or whatever okay. it is that you aspire to. I, I wish you the best of luck, <laughs> you and your tech startup. Um, and everyone else out there as well, wish you the best of luck and we're here to support you. And um, so to answer your question, the ESTA visa um, is really not the, the best visa for, for tech startups hmm. to come to the United States to um, participate in accelerator programs for a number of different reasons. Typically these um, accelerator programs, um, they can be 90 days, sometimes we see them run for longer, and so that in and of itself is going yeah. to be a, a little difficult for the founders because the general rule with, uh, v with tourist visas um, is that the amount of time that you spend in the United States, you have to spend outside of the United States. And that's so that you don't give the impression that you have uh, an intent to permanently reside. Because mm. when you get a tourist visa, you're making a promise to the United States that you're gonna go back home. Mm. And so if you're coming in and out a lot, it kind of raises a red flag in terms of what's going on here. You know, they'll ask questions about you, what you're doing, you'll say you have a business, and then, you know, it's all downhill from there mm. so that in and of itself the fact that you only have 90 days is is a problem and especially if you want to launch your company here in the United States it's better to find a visa that is more appropriate from you from the outset to give you that flexibility of, of coming in and out and also without the worry of um, potentially violating you know the federal laws of the United States and what kind of visas would you recommend for this? oh my god great question <laughs> So um, we, as I said, as I mentioned before, we do a lot of work um, in this area. You know, we have uh, a very strong passion for for startups. Mm -hmm. um, we we love helping founders um, for a number of different reasons. It's really exciting. Transcend borders. Transcend borders, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, bringing the best and the brightest to the United States, like you know, Michael, um, and. Um, so some of the some I'm of the best citizens. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about the best and the brightest part. <laughs> uh, but we okay, yeah. So yep, what, what the best best visas, best visas, best visas. Okay, here we go. So H one B. Okay. There are really only there are not only but you know there are four visas that are really the best for founders of startups. So there's the H one B, there's the E two if you come from a qualifying country, there's the L one if you know, you have your business set up uh, overseas and you've been working for that business for at least a year and then you want to transfer it to the United States. And there's the O visa. Those are the four visas. That's it. Solid. Yeah. Well, and obviously, you know, you can always come to DLG if you need any help with these visas. And um, I guess that wraps it up for Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining us. Omid, you were great. Thank oh, you for coming. Thank you, Michael. Hope I appreciate have you, you having me. Absolutely. It's and, great. And uh, stay real, America. <laughs>